service thus far, I pray that you would be with us. Help our minds and hearts and eyes and ears and our senses, Lord. Just be open to what you would have to hear, Lord. Let me be a messenger. Let my body be your vessel. And let my words be your words and not mine. Bless his name, the Lord, be in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to the book of Proverbs and Matthew. Proverbs and St. Matthew. We just want to put a tab there. And I'll give you those in a second. For those that know me, you all know I'm just I'm a weird guy, so. Or we're rooting for it. No, I'm not hungry. My wife does feed me. But there's a reason for this, and I'll show it to you in a minute. That's what Joe. Will you hind like me? No. No. Yeah. At least I can go be with Jesus. So. <coughs> chapter 8 and verse 23 and when he entered into a ship his disciples followed him and behold there arose a great tempest in the sea insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying Lord save us we perish and when he saith unto the and he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey? Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter three. This is a very well-known verse, I think. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, mm -hmm. and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Yes. I want to say something. On, on a side note, I was talking to a friend yesterday, and... The second half of Proverbs 3 5. Lean not into thy own understanding. I think one of the challenges for Christians today in our contemporary world, and there are many, but one of the challenges is that they're coming to the Bible with their own preconceived ideas. And no preconceived notions from their personal experiences, good and bad, from the uh, deluge of information from the media, the school systems, and, and the public opinion in large. And they're coming into looking at the scripture, even though they're saved, even though they're a Christian, even though they trust the Lord. And they're looking at the scripture and saying, well, this isn't this isn't correct and that isn't correct and this doesn't make sense and this contradicts this and they're failing to notice or failing to realize and accept that this is God's 
unfailable work. It is not flawed. It is not mistaken. And it's challenging sometimes to think, well, but Pastor Steve, there's so many translations and there's so many, uh, so many men and people's hands were involved in this and that. And my simple answer to all of that is, go back to the beginning. Who created <coughs> us? God the Father. And what did he create us? In his image. The magnet Dio, I believe, is the Latin. He made us an image. Do you think, if you trust Jesus, and you trust that he's God, and God is who he says he is, do you think God is strong enough, bad enough, awesome enough, powerful enough, knowledgeable enough, to ensure that the 66 books that he had these different men choose, that they would be translated in such a way that it would be important, and pertinent, and valuable to you now. Do you think he can't ensure that whatever so-called contradictions and mistakes that are in the scripture aren't really there? We come to the scripture and we try to make the scripture fit our preconceived notions. But that's like trying to stuff a whale into a goldfish. It's just not going to happen. What we need to do is take God's word and we put ourselves into it. And it cleanses us and helps us to understand where we are wrong and we are contradictory. Y'all pardon me for a second. My apple analogy was a good one. Had I thought it through for this. <laughs> so, what I just simply want to touch on today is trust and rust. Just a little play on words there for you. Is trust and rust. We know that our physical bodies, because of sin in the world that these bodies although they were meant to be created and they were created in God's image and they were meant to be immortal because of sin they have decayed and we know that for example if you take a piece of metal and you put it into a, a puddle of water or bowl or whatever and it sits there long enough the oxidization causes it to rust causes it to break down and crumble and eventually give way, depending upon obviously what kind of metal it is and how long it, the, the, you know, the, it sits in the water. But it eventually will rust and show signs outwardly that it's decaying. What I just simply want to say today is trust or rust. Do we truly, like Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart? And a question I ask myself sometimes in an effort to challenge myself is if God spoke to me today and it spoke to me in a way that I know it's him, I know it's not my conscience, I know it's not uh, pressures from family, friends, church members, other Christians. I know it's God. And he asked me to do something today, something big that would be a challenge for me. Uh, would I do it? Would I question God? Would I question his direction? and His uh, Not question his authority, but question, why would you ask me to do that? Lord? He asked uh, the, the prophet to go and... Uh, Mary Homer, and she was a prostitute. I mean, can you imagine? God comes to you and says, hey, I want you to chase her down and marry her. She runs away. He goes to get her and pays a premium price to, to win her back. We know that that's a, a picture of God the Father and the nation of Israel. Would, would we trust God enough to do that? Would we trust God enough to do the things that he would ask us to do? And sometimes I question, not because I question God's 
ability, authority, and power, but I question my faith, my willing to trust God so much that I'm willing to sacrifice everything like he did in an effort to listen to him and be obedient. Trust or rust? How do you spell, uh, how does God spell love? O-B-E-Y. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. We know all many different stories in there of how uh, some of the old kings of Israel were told not to take of the spoils of uh, different countries because it would allow idols and idol worship to, to come into their, their, uh, uh, into their country. And uh, some of these kings would still do that anyway because they were either greedy or they didn't see why the Lord would say that uh, or whatever the case might be. And as a result, they didn't trust fully. And because of that, so to speak, they rusted. They decayed. They broke down. And they had to get to a place where their decay was enough for them to say, I messed up, God. I messed up. I'm sorry. <coughs> when you think about just playing with words and letters in the English language, trust and rust, What's the only difference between those two words? The letter T. Obviously, the T is the cross. The T is Jesus Christ. The T is the blood of Christ. What can protect you from rusting is the blood of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. The, uh, the cleansing power of God's agape love for us. Well, I have a, a note here when I was looking up some information about this message. In my computer, I have a list of different things that I've, I've kept over time. and I came across this one, is that the more I trust, the more I love. And the more I love, the more I trust. And the two are hand in hand. To trust God, you have to love him. Because if you don't, how can you put your faith and trust in him? But if you love him so much that you put your faith and trust in him, you can't not love him more as he does things in your life to show you how much he does love you. Obviously, he could do nothing for us in our lives ever except the cross and that would be too much but he loves us and the God the Father loves us just like we love our children our grandchildren, great grandchildren that we want to do for them because we want to express our love to them in a tangible way and God does that this isn't a super great example but if you can see this out in cyberspace or I took a bite out of both of these apples and I put oil over the one and nothing over the other and not enough time has elapsed to really see the difference but if you look closely you can see that the one without the oil mm -hmm. is decaying quicker but the one that's covered with the oil is decaying slower and why is that that's because the power of God's Holy Spirit will protect you from the elements outside, from the elements of oxidization, from the elements of Satan and evil and our world. Everywhere you turn, there's uh, uh, inappropriate billboards and signs or ads that have nothing to do with products that they're selling or news that you can't necessarily, you don't know if you could trust. What's being reported is, is that the whole story is, you know, um, what is it, Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. Right. And that'll help me to wrap this up, the rest of the story. Amen. We don't, when we find a contradiction or something in the Bible we don't understand, there's more to the story. Yes. And God wants us to dig in and find out what that is. 
He wants us to maintain that curiosity. God's not scared of you questioning him or his word. Questioning in an in a, in a inquisitive, I want to learn and know. Not questioning him like an atheist of, if you're God, prove it. He did. He made you. He made your parents who made you, and he made their parents who made them, all the way back to Adam and Eve. I get, I get frustrated sometimes when I watch TV shows and movies and all this mumbo jumbo talk about the earth is 150 billion years old and things of that nature and so forth. And you know what? If for whatever reason I'm wrong and I'm not understanding the scripture correctly or whatever, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, God did create Adam and Eve. And it was because of their sin that our outward bodies are corruptible. But God can cover us with the Holy Spirit. And he can keep us from rusting from the elements of that are outside. Because why? Because he that is against us is like a roaring lion seeking to kill and destroy. If you want to stand with me, you can. Trust or rust? The only difference is the cross. The only difference is that letter T right there. The only difference between trust and rust is the blood of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, the cleansingness of the freedom of Christ. We have freedom in Christ to be who we are. He doesn't want to squelch our personalities. He gave them to us. He's smart enough to know what we were going to be like and do and say and whatever long before we were ever even conceived. But he just wants us to give all that back to him so he can use it. And in return, he'll use us as a conduit to be a blessing to everyone around us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would continue to help us to trust you with all thy heart, to not lean on our own understanding, to seek out the answers that are in the scripture, to look for the rest of the story, to understand the things that we don't understand, but most of all so that we can be obedient to what you called each of us as individuals to do as families, as church, as country. Lord, help us once again to get back to that place where we put the T in front of our rusting souls, Lord, that the T, that cross, that Bible, that blood, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, help us to put it back in front of where it belongs so we can serve you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our body, all of our strength, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.